And vitamin D is, is, of course, incredibly cheap and incredibly safe. We can buy it at the supermarket, essentially. Maybe not, maybe not the supermarket, but in pharmacies or vitamin shops. Um, and it really is incredibly cheap. You can buy about um, uh, eight months' worth of treatment um, for $25. Um, so, if you Google vitamin D and MS, there are about uh, 1.5 million hits, and almost all those websites tell people with MS to take it. And the reason for that is that there's actually lots of circumstantial evidence around vitamin D and MS. Uh, latitudinal gradients. People in Tasmania get twice as much as MS as in Newcastle, or in the Hunter Valley. And that's still the case today. There's a large Oz immune project which is tracking new cases of MS in both those areas, and it's finding exactly that two to one. And otherwise, the populations are interchangeable. Um, so, so more sunlight might prevent quite a lot of MS. And vitamin D is made in the skin uh, in response to sunlight. So sun exposure produces vitamin D. That's how we get vitamin D. The, the, the whole story about vitamin D came from the latitude effect, uh, finding that uh, if you lived where there was more uh, sunshine, where there was more vitamin D, you were less likely to get MS. And so that, that uh, whole story built up around that. Uh, and also, the, the, you, if you give mice with the uh, equivalent of MS uh, vitamin D, you can cure their, um, their disease. Uh, so th there's a lot of um, associative evidence that vitamin D uh, might be important in MS. Relapses of MS are much more common in late winter and early spring when, um, and in fact we're just going through the late winter, early spring period, and I can tell you clinically that's absolutely the case. We're, you know, organizing lots of relapse treatments right now. Some of you might have had late winter, early spring relapses. Um, MRI lesions, much more common in late winter, early spring. Uh, if you take vitamin D blood levels, as a very beautiful study in Tasmania has recently done, you can clearly show that for people, when people have lower vitamin D blood levels, they're more likely to relapse. So there's lots of circumstantial evidence that links low vitamin D levels to disease causation and disease activity. Um, and therefore, we should trial vitamin D supplementation. It's safe, it's cheap, and it's potentially effective. So MSRA is really proposing to conduct a clinical trial in people with first ever episodes of, of MS, so-called first demyelinating events, uh, and randomizing them. A placebo trial, so placebo versus 1,000, 3,000, or 6,000 units following people up for up to a year, measuring in great detail how much new inflammation they have to, to, try and, to try and get the answer. I think it's potentially very exciting and actually has a decent chance of working, but we would like to create the evidence around it, especially around how much people should take. We're trying to mirror that sort of physiology of sun exposure. You know, if you are um, basically a traditional lifestyle uh, African or uh, Australian Aborigine, you run around with uh, a typical blood vitamin D level of between 150 and 200. Around 150. Um, and a typical, um, you know, white office worker, well, in Glasgow they have a level of about 30, <laughs> and here it's a bit higher than that. But, um, but yes, yeah, so all we're trying to do is to get vitamin D levels up to you know, near the top of the physiological range, the range that you would achieve with traditional lifestyle sun exposure. If any of the genes uh, which are associated with MS control vitamin D function, uh, then that would be the first smoking gun, uh, which really did show that vitamin D um, uh, contributed to MS susceptibility. It would only ever be contributed, so uh, if you did get a lot of vitamin D, uh, maybe the other factors uh, were more important uh, in, in your particular case. So it's, it's not going to be a huge effect that dominates everything else, but it could certainly be contributive. And I can tell you that the Angene study um, found a block of genes which were associated with MS, and in the middle of that block uh, is the single gene which activates vitamin D. So we are trying to run a clinical trial in multiple sclerosis of vitamin D. It's extremely attractive 
because vitamin D is a very safe. So the question is, well, why don't we just ask everyone with MS to take it? The problem is that we don't know the right dose, and we don't know if, like other drugs, it might actually worsen MS at certain doses and improve MS at other doses. We simply don't know. So we need a clinical trial, and by clinical trial, I mean a group of people at the earliest stages of, of MS, usually after the first episode ever, who are prepared for a period of time to what we call be blinded. Blinded here means that they will take a capsule and they won't know what's in it. It could be placebo, it could be a thousand units of vitamin D, three thousand units or six thousand units of vitamin D a day. And they go through the next six to twelve months being intensively studied for any evidence of new inflammation. And the people who are doing that studying, the neurologists, the radiologists analyzing the MRI scans that these people will have, do not know whether they are looking at a person taking placebo, nothing, taking 1,000, 3,000, 6,000 units, and they will then, at the end, be able to tell uh, when the code is broken, so to speak, who did best, who had the least amount of relapses, who had the least amount of new inflammation. And this kind of trial, which would probably take about 300 people with MS and would be conducted in perhaps 25, large MS centers around Australia and New Zealand um, would actually answer the question, does it work and how good is it and what dose should you take? In the context of vitamin D research, pharmaceutical companies are not interested in this product. It's cheap. I can buy 200 days, almost a, you know, a year's supply for about $30. No one's going to make a significant amount of money for it and that may, from it, and that means that no one is prepared to put in millions and millions of dollars to actually research it. So the Melbourne Brain Centre is conceived a, a, as an idea to facilitate that, to provide the image storage, the image analysis capacity, the data management. It's, it's a three to four million dollar project. And, and we want to specifically provide this for what we call investigator-initiated trials. So these are trials which people with multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis research Australia, neurologists, radiologists looking at scans want to do in collaboration, but where there are no financial outcomes.